Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to be here. Um, special word of welcome, of course, and thanks to uh, Dina, to Avi, and to our hosts here, the Open University, to our ambassador, and of course, to Marcel Chaton. Um, I did not only say uh, two years ago when I was here that I would come back. Sounds like a Terminator, you know, I'll be back. <laughs> and, but I said also, and that's what he should have shown, that I cannot imagine a European science and innovation program without the participation of Israel. <laughs> and that's why I'm extremely grateful that Israel will be the first country outside the European Union which will be associated to Horizon 2020. And that is very much thanks to enormous efforts from both sides to make it work. And in that context, I would not only like to give tribute to our ambassador and the negotiating team, but also, of course, to my good friend uh, Marcel Chaton, who is, as I said last, uh, last time as well when I was here, sometimes a big pain in the neck, but he is really a great negotiator. So give both of them a big hand. I'm here today to present to you Horizon 2020. I'll do it together with my colleagues who came over from Brussels. Because indeed, uh, Horizon 2020 is the biggest science and innovation program in the world. 80 billion euro for the period 2014-2020. And what is more amazing is that you probably have heard that the future budget of the EU will shrink. There will be less money at European Union level available in the period 2014 than there's currently the case, with one exception, science and innovation. Science and innovation is the only area where there will be a 30% increase in a shrinking budget. And I think that shows that at the highest level, political level in Europe, the level of Cameron, Merkel, they realize very well that there's a close relation between investment in science and innovation, competitiveness, economic growth, and job creation, on the other hand. But I think there are also two other reasons why we were able to secure so much funding for science and innovation at European level. I think the reason is that we put out a rock solid proposal which is based on in-depth consultation with stakeholders, industry, and users, patient organizations. And I'm very grateful to the many scientists and innovators from Israel who participated to these discussions. But there's also a third reason why I think we're able to secure so much money. Because what normally happens when future EU budget is discussed, the farmers come to Brussels and block the streets, the fishermen with their ships block the ports, and the scientists stay in the laboratories. But this time it was slightly different because there was an online petition launched signed by 150,000 scientists. And on the eve of the decision-making day when the heads of state and government came to Brussels, there were three Nobel laureates who went to see President Barroso and Van Rompuy. And they made a very strong plea to them, invest in the future, invest in science and innovation. So I think these were the reasons why we were able to secure such an impressive budget. But Horizon 2020 is not just a continuation of Framework Program 5, 6, and 7. It's something new. And that's why we have not called it Framework Program 8, but Horizon 2020. Because for the first time in history, and Avi already referred to that, we are coupling science to innovation. We are bringing together different programs. Secondly, we are going from a thematic approach to a challenge-driven approach. We will have a very strong focus on small and medium-sized enterprises. We will be open to the rest of the world more than ever before. And last but not least, there will be radical simplification of rules or procedures because we have been making the system far too complex altogether. Now, Horizon 2020 is based on three pillars, excellent science, industrial leadership, and the grand societal challenges. And we talk about excellent science is, of course, obvious. We talk notably about the European Research Council. One of the best things we have ever done for European science and for science in general in the world. An enormous and successful, and successful endeavor, and your country, Israel, is participating big time in the ERC. And last night, we had the pleasure to meet with a couple of grant holders, and they really shared with us their passion for the work they are doing. And they also made it quite clear that without this ERC grant, they could have never done the things which they are doing at the moment. And I'm convinced that also in the next years to come, Israel will do extremely well in the ERC. But in this per period, we also are financing large-scale infrastructures, 
research facilities and the access to these large-scale facilities. Think about CERN, think about synchro radiation facilities, think about the uh, telescopes, which are located in uh, Chile. Think about research vessels. So we are also providing access to top researchers to excellent infrastructures. And we have, of course, the future uh, uh, enabling technologies, uh, the, the FED uh, flagships and the flat open. The second pillar is all about industrial leadership. It's about the nano, the bio, the ICT, the enabling technologies which allow industry indeed to move forward and to take leading roles. In that context, there's going to be dedicated measures for high growth innovative companies because they are going to get a special place in the program. We have earmarked 20% of the budget to these uh, impressive innovators. And we're also going to deploy under this scheme a system of loans, debt and equity financing. And Jean-David Malo will say more about that uh, later on in the day. That is new because in the past we always have been given grants. We now are also going to be active in equity and debt financing, although we had a pilot already in the previous program. And then the last pillar is all about the grant societal challenges. And we have listed them here. It's about an aging population where we have to find uh, solutions for uh, neurodegenerative diseases. It's about food safety, it's about security, it's about climate change, you see them listed here. And that is indeed, I think, the novelty of the program. We step away from a thematic approach and we go to the ground societal challenges. And the bulk of the funding goes to, indeed, projects under this third pillar. Now, major simplification. As I mentioned before, we have made the system far too complex. And that's why we have made it quite clear, the Commissioner and myself, the next system, Horizon 2020, the next program should be based on a trust-based approach. We have to step away from obsessive controls, micromanagement, audits, recoveries, and more audits. And that's why we have always said in our negotiations with the European Parliament and the 28 member states, we are willing to make a compromise on everything on the structure, on the architecture, on the priorities, but never on simplification, and on the criteria of excellence as sole criteria for selecting projects. So here you see what we've been doing, a single set of rules for funding on the Horizon 2020, simple reimbursement, faster time to grants, less audits, those who are working full-time on the European projects do not have to have any time recording anymore, in other words, a very effective system whereby we are also optimizing our IT tools. There's going to be a new approach to our calls for proposals and our work programs. As I mentioned, much less prescriptive. We are not going to write in detail the type of research that should be done. No, we are going to present to the scientists and the innovators the challenges. And we tell them, come up with another solutions. How crazy they are may be, come up with ideas to address these ground societal challenges and which will be broken down, of course, in work packages. We also will have two-year work programs instead of one year because that gives a better idea of what is coming ahead uh, in future at the request, of course, of our scientists and participants. Now, small and medium-sized enterprises are, of course, the backbone of the European economy, also the backbone of your economy, and it's very important that, indeed, we help them to be set up, but also we help them to innovate. And that's why 20% of the budget of Horizon 2020 will be dedicated to them. And we have also a very specific scheme set up for them. It's a little bit based on the American SBIR scheme. I think most of you are familiar with that. Uh, we will continue with the joint endeavor with Eureka called Eurostars. And I think many of you are also participating in that. And we have a dedicated uh, instrument of risk finance, uh, which Jean David again will say more about it in the afternoon. So SMEs are going to be a core focus of the program, because let's be quite frank, we have been in the past very good in transforming euros into knowledge, but not always very good in transforming the knowledge back into euros. And that will be the big challenge uh, for the next program, delivery. International cooperation, I think the chief scientist already mentioned it, uh, we need to reach out to others. We need to cooperate much more. Let's be clear, Europe at the moment has 7% of the world's population, but we produce 30% of the world's knowledge. And that's amazing for a small continent like Europe that we are so productive in our knowledge output. But it is of course obvious that the situation will not continue to exist in the 10, 15 years to come. 
Certainly not if you see what's happening in South Korea and in Brazil and China. And that's why we need to tap into the knowledge which is not produced in Europe, which is increasingly not produced in Europe. And that's why we say very clearly Horizon 2020 will be the most open program there is. So if you want to work together with an American scientist or a Brazilian scientist or a Chinese or South Korea, be my guest, take them on board because we need to get these brains involved. We need to tap into the knowledge which we are not generating either in Israel or in Europe as a whole. We have a number of countries which will be associated, and Israel is the first one which will be associated to the program, but there are, there are a lot of others also knocking on the door. I must say, before Israel, there was one other country which we are still negotiating with, that was Switzerland, a top innovator in Europe, and it's a good sign that uh, countries like Switzerland are very keen to participate, and also the same is for Israel, because it shows that there's excitement. It shows that Horizon 2020 has something to offer, but it also shows that indeed these countries, Israel and, and Switzerland, realize that globalization is also happening in science and innovation, and we need to tap into the best knowledge which is available worldwide. Besides an open, bottom-up approach where everyone can join in, there will be also targeted international cooperation activities. We have a very interesting program which we are going to reinforce on doing research on poverty-related diseases, HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis, with sub saharan Africa. We have a very interesting program on rare earth, these precious materials, where there's a monopoly in China, and there we are together with Japan and the United States developing a first-class research program. We have hypersonic flying with Russia and Australia and Japan. So we have, besides the complete open-up uh, of the program, the openness of the program, dedicated strategic international cooperation activities with key partners. Cooperation and participation uh, in the industry is essential, not only small and medium sized but also large industry. And that's why we are at the moment negotiating on the Horizon 2020 what we call the Innovation Investment Package. These are a number of public-private partnerships with big industry. It's in the field of innovative medicines with Big Pharma, it's in the field of aeronautics with the aeronautical industry. So these are PPPs whereby the European Union puts money into the pot and the uh, big industry puts money into the pot. Now many people say then, well, you know, this is a handout with too big industry, or this is a deal with big industry. But let me be clear, out of the almost 3 billion euro which we will put into innovative medicines, this is the PPP with big industry, not a single euro will go to big industry. All the money is going to small and medium-sized enterprises and to academia. So this is quite an innovative structure, and I think it's also a recognition of the large enterprises that increasingly for knowledge generation, they need to reach out to academia and small players. So what are the next steps? We have completed the negotiations. The calls were launched on the 11th of December, and um, we hope to sign the first contracts uh, just before the summer, uh, because we want to respect, of course, the time to grants of maximum eight months. So from that point of view, the only outstanding negotiations we are still doing are not with Israel, but they are with the European Parliament and the 28 member states on the innovation investment package. These are these public-private partnerships in the value of 20 billion euro, where we hope that by uh, Easter we can everything wrapped up. Now Israel and Horizon 2020, I would like to complete my presentation and conclude it with a couple of statements on that one. You are participating extremely well in the program. And it's amazing in how many projects you are involved. If you look at the funding which has returned to your country, it's also very impressive. And some people will say, well, you know, in the presentation of the chief scientist, he was already talking about uh, 800 uh, million which returned. He is calculating in negotiations still undertaking place. I calculate in signed contracts. But it is obvious that it's an extremely good return investment because your contribution is around 530 million to the program. And if you're going to get 830 million out, that's of course a very good return investment. And as I said to Avi last time in his previous life as venture capitalist, you probably never made these returns on investment, Avi. <laughs> um, so from that point of view, you are doing extremely well, but it's not only about the money. And that's something you know, I always have to underline in two countries where I am, my own country, the Netherlands, and in Israel, where they always are obsessed by the money. 
Uh, it's not only about the money, it's about the network, it's about uh, sharing the risks of research, it's about sharing knowledge, it's about new markets, it's about training people. How many people have not written us letters saying that thanks to the European programs we have been training our staff? Uh, so from that point of view, it's much more than the financial angle. And in a recent study we have done, uh, it's quite interesting. If you ask someone who has never participated in the framework program, and you ask, why would you participate? They all say, oh, the money. But the ones who have participated, and you ask them, why would you participate again? They say, well, it's the networking, it's the contacts, it's the training, it's the access to new markets. And the financial element is important, but it does not come in the first place. But I know that uh, both in the Netherlands and Israel, I can't convince people of this argument. <laughs> Um, so I'll quickly go to the, uh, um, the next point. We have also listed here the uh, top organizations uh, from Israel who are participating in our programs. And your success rate, 21%, is above the EU average, but it could be much higher, Marcel. Uh, and uh, if I look at Switzerland, if I look at the UK, 24%, 25%. So I think there is more to be done. Not talk about the ERC, but I talk about general. Um, so again, the participation of Israel in the European programs has been a win-win story for both sides. And we, of course, look with great interest to what is happening in the field of science and innovation in your country. And it's amazing how strong you are in research and innovation. If you see the investments which take place, it's very impressive, 4% of GDP. If you see what your private sector is doing, amazing not only European context, but worldwide scene. Strong reputation as startup nation. Uh, your researchers are amongst the best in the world. And the fact that so many ERC grant holders are Israelis show that there is real, an enormous amount of excellence in your country. And these areas which are listed are obvious. You're strong in ICT, in health, bio, renewable energies, water technology, agri-food. It's quite a broad span where your country is an extremely strong performer. Um, so I see also under the new program, Horizon 2020, huge opportunities for Israeli innovators and scientists to be active. From the ERC grants to the Maris Klogowska Curie grants, from the societal challenges to the key enabling technologies, the SME instruments, the access to finance instruments, look at these opportunities and really make use of them. And also be careful, it's not going to be business as usual as it was on the framework program seven. So you really have to prepare yourself for a new game, for a new match. That means look into the rules of the game, look into the opportunities and possibilities. My conclusions for today is that uh, increasingly our political leaders are realizing that there's a link between investments in science and innovation, competitiveness and economic growth. And I think your country is a beautiful example of that. Secondly, that because of that Horizon 2020 has been given an enormous increase of funding, making it the largest budget of science and innovation in the world. And let me be clear, our American colleagues are extremely jealous of that because the Americans you see in the United States budget cuts. And not only that, we have a seven-year program. In the United States, you have to go each year to the Hill, to Congress, to make a plea for the money. Then I think it is important as well, and that's why I'm here today, that Israel is for us a key partner in science and innovation. And therefore, my final slide is the following. Israel and the EU, we are partners in excellent science and innovation. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>